Cleveland Browns continue to fill out their coaching staff, bring in Ben Bloom as their new defensive coordinator. We'll talk about what this means for the Cleveland Browns up front and, and what uh, an addition this means uh, overall for the defense in general under Jim Schwartz. We'll talk about that. We got another top-notch name on the free agency uh, list, a guy that just was let go. We'll tell you about that and, and who that could be and possibly on the radar for, for the Cleveland Browns. And we'll continue to touch on a lot of different topics in free agency and the different other things uh, as we get you ready throughout the Browns 2023 offseason. It's the next episode of the Locked on Browns podcast. You are locked on Browns. Your daily Cleveland Browns podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends, your daily delivery of all things Dog Pound, LGB, on ELLB, the Lockdown Browns podcast, brought to you by the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Your hosts, Jeff Lloyd, at Jeff underscore LJ underscore Lloyd, from the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show, 92.3, the fan on-air personality, Mr. Garrett Bush, at G Bush 91 We appreciate everybody who makes Locked on Browns, their first listen every single day, whether it is for free, always available on your favorite podcast app, or of course here on YouTube. Make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you have your notifications on so when the episodes of the content drop, you are there to digest it. Also, if you got Roku, search Locked on Cleveland Sports. You will find the Locked on Browns podcast, the ultimate Cleveland sports show. You will get your Locked on Cavs, Locked on Guardians coverage as well. Today's episode is brought to you by the FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of the NFL. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked on today to get started. Uh, obviously, some Cleveland Browns news over the evening last night. Um, and... This was probably once the shakeup started to come, going to be was going to be the most anticipated hire for the Cleveland Browns as far as positional coaches. That defensive line was a mess last year outside of Miles Garrett, and and when I say mess, I'm probably taking that term and using it loosely. I would probably say in those regards, the Browns have elevated. Ben Bloom to defensive line coach. Ben Bloom started his coaching career with the Cleveland Browns way back in the day. Basically got in as, you know, a guy cutting film, analytics guy, uh, you know, moved on over, spent some time with the Dallas Cowboys, uh, migrated back to Cleveland Browns in 2020 as part of the inaugural Andrew Berry and Kevin Stefanski staff. I think for Ben Bloom, this probably shows little promise for the guy. Um, knowing how important the work with the defensive line is going to be in 2023. Um, and in a short time, Ben Bloom has probably obviously gotten into the good graces of Jim Schwartz. And let's not fool anybody here. Ben Bloom is the defensive line coach of the Cleveland Browns. Um, but Jim Schwartz could be all up in there. I mean, we know it. I know it. G knows it. Players know it. Um, that's where Jim's bread and butter is in this league. Um, I think he feels maybe there's great matchup between younger coach, you know, more analytic, better with cutting video, all that type of stuff where there can be a solid working relationship between a guy like Ben Bloom and Jim Schwartz. But as far as, you know, the d defensive line is concerned, you've now gone out and got the coordinator and you got Jim Schwartz in here. You've now filled the role of positional coach with Ben Bloom. Ben Bloom, obviously, you know, being here for years, uh, he is comfortable with Miles Garrett. He is comfortable with Perrion Winfrey, Isaiah Thomas, Alex Wright, the guy, you know, the holdovers that should be here in 2023. Um, now it's going to be all about, you know, basically just filling that room and, and getting some ballers and some dudes in here to get jo the job done. Um, but, you know, last evening, the word officially comes down. The Browns are going to promote from within. Uh, ben Bloom is your new defensive line coach for the Cleveland Browns. Yeah, I mean, I mean you've you've gone outside the last couple of times with Jim Shorts and, and um, Bubba Ventrone um, to find some of your coaches. Um, just like, uh, you know, when you're dealing with players, you can get them from a, a different uh, a multitude of places. Sometimes you get people coming from the college game, they come up to the NFL, 
they get an opportunity. Sometimes you have people and then shake up in a in a in a, a coaching staff, and those individuals get another uh, another opportunity to move up. In this case, as of of Ben Bloom, and then other times you can you can get coaches that are you know first time head coaches and, and guys that have never had any much experience, but again an opportunity to cut their teeth in the league. So. There's always, um, you know, you know, a multitude of places where you can promote talent. And so, you know, the Browns chose to do it from within. I think it has to do a lot with what, what you just said, Jeff. They're familiar. There's a level of familiarity with these guys, right? You know, they can he can sit down and, and talk to Jim Schwartz about what, what exactly were they asking those guys to do last year and whether or not that was best suited for them. Because we've already said that we need a couple of these guys to be great. We need a couple of those guys to take the next step. One of the guys, Alex Wright, Perry on Winfrey. So he can sit there with Jim Schwartz and they can break it down together and say, okay, well, what was this call? What what what, what did you what were you asking these guys to do? Okay, uh, I see what you're saying. Let's see if some of that will translate to what I want to do. Let's see where the skill sets lie with these guys. And so it's a familiar face, familiar coach that's able to kind of break down what they were doing, bridge the gap in what they were doing into what they want to move into to now. So, uh, you know, I think it's a, you know, it's a good move, a solid move. There's going to be a number of people that stick around, um, you know, even on the offensive side, uh, what we talked about Bill Callahan and uh, he, you know, obviously there was some guys leaving to go be uh, the uh, coordinators of the places. Bill Callahan uh, was a, a guy that they were able to retain. So um, I, I think it's a good move. Um, it gives you a, a landing and a sounding board and a base to start working from and to, and to get these guys to what you want to buy into what you want to do um, from a familiar voice. So um, I like to hire, like to move. Uh, this was going to be difficult, um, you know, because of the importance of this hire. Um, and certainly, you know, Jim Schwartz coming over here new, uh, not a lot of familiarity between, you know, the coaches that were basically still on staff when he got here. Um, you know, you got to think in some respect that, you know, Andrew Barry and Coach Stefanski probably put in some positive feedback for, you know, Ben Bloom here to get this opportunity, you know, was run game coordinator last year. Don't necessarily know how much that goes for Ben Bloom in this respect, obviously, uh, as we know, the Browns, you know, issues um, were you know paramount last year as far as you know, defending the run. But now you bring in a guy like Jim Schwartz and a guy like Ben Bloom can kind of basically know what he – learn what he doesn't know, kind of so to speak, if you understand what I'm saying. Um, so, you know, he's going to get, you know, basically a, you know, a guy who, you know, graduate, you know, played football and graduated from Tufts. Uh, he's definitely going to get a huge, huge, you know, master's degree here, so to speak, um, as he goes into work here now as basically almost, you know, Jim Schwartz's right-hand man here. Um, you know, a lot of guys are going to have to elevate their play. I mean, we can say anything we want about these coaches. Uh, you got to get personnel right. You got to get players to, you know, step up. Guys have to improve. There's got to be development. Um, it's the key to it all here for the Cleveland Browns and the possibility uh, that this defense returns to form in 2023 of the defense that we saw in 2021. Obviously, at times 20, the defense was good. 21, certainly, certainly a very, very positive year for the Browns defense. But in 2023, um, it's going to have to be a, a, a major, major bounce back year for this defense if this team has you know any intent on reaching the heights that they can. Uh, we're going to switch it up here. Um, you know, Deshaun Watson, if nobody uh, didn't get the opportunity yet, uh, sat down with actually his quarterback coach who hosts his own podcast. Uh, kind of got you know, and this is the one thing that was always going to be difficult with Deshaun as he came back from all this is just getting some general football talk from Deshaun. Um, and there was a lot to be taken away from that podcast. Uh, G and I have you know, a big point that we think we want to focus on, and we are going to do that next year. Your latest Lockdown Browns, Garrett Bush, Jeff Lloyd. Thanks for being along, folks, for the ride. The midway point of the NBA season is here, and now is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook, because new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your bet first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line to point scores, threes drained. Plus with FanDuel, 
you can even pull your bets and make a small amount on what could be a large wager overall with the same game parlay. You're going to sit down. You're going to put two and a half hours into a game. Why not put together, you know, four, five, six bets? And at the end of it, they all hit. You got yourself a nice chunk of change. So don't miss the chance to get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets. When you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on, that's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Welcome back to the Locked On Browns podcast. Um, we want to thank everybody out there for continuing to make Locked On Browns their first listen of each and every day. Uh, Jeff, when we look at uh, Deshaun Watson, he spoke. Um, with, uh, I believe his, his uh, quarterback coach, Quincy Avery, had a podcast. Um, no video, just audio. And uh, he kind of talked about a couple of things. Uh, we kind of laughed and joked. He said uh, he's going to be in the same area as, as uh, DeAndre Hopkins. Don't know if that was something that he was just joking about, something he was playing around about. But DeAndre Hopkins has been, uh, you know, linked to possible um, Cleveland Browns talk. We don't know how serious that is, but one thing that I do want to drill down on is he said something that I thought was really, um, really, uh, it, it was intriguing. Um, you know, we've there's two different schools of thought here. Um, people usually say they either like Kevin Stefanski as a player caller, or they're like, uh, uh, he leaves a lot to be desired. There's really not anything in the middle. And Sean Watson came on and he said that, um, he really enjoyed uh, Kevin Stefanski and the way he calls the game. He really likes the way he calls his, his offensive game plans and different things like that. Um, and when you look at it, even from a perspective where Deshaun Watson struggled at the end of the year in the last six games, um, you know, I wanted to, to to bounce this off of you. What what do you think is the what do you think is is the the difference? What do you think? Why do you think some people really believe? He, they love his play calling, and some people say, no, I don't like it. What is at the cause and the root of that? Because it just seems to be that Deshaun Watson loves his play calling, but they really didn't get the production that they wanted to get out of some of the play calls, and they weren't even as efficient as Jacoby Brissett, who's a backup. Jeff, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I mean, if you kind of do look at it this year, and you know, we're going to base this for Coach Stefanski over three seasons, um, he's already four quarterbacks deep. I'm sorry, five quarterbacks deep as we had uh, three quarterbacks play in 2021, if everybody remembers. Um, so it's difficult for, you know, can, and even with Baker in most of 2021, he was hampered. You know what I'm saying? He was hampered with his talent. He certainly was hampered with his injuries. Um, so I think he had a situation where maybe Coach Stefanski was basically trying to reinvent the wheel week in, week out. Uh, 2020 and for maybe the early part of 2021, he had a running game that for most intents and purposes could carry the team. You know, Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt, when those guys were humming and were at their best, you know, play calling as far as throwing the ball, you know, I don't want to say it became secondary, but it became to the point where it's okay if it doesn't work out because I can just get these yards back. Um, then you got to last year and it was Jacoby Brissett and, you know, as good as Jacoby was, it's just a different style with Jacoby, a bigger guy, a little bit of slower guy, doesn't no quickness in what he does. So you know, there was limited. You know, you didn't get to certainly, you know, the the fourth and fifth guy uh in the route pattern um with Jacoby. Then you go to Deshaun Watson. So now you go from you know bigger, slower quarterback to younger, quicker, faster quarterback. Then by the time he got Deshaun Watson, he got a factor in. Now you are, you know, where they were was already, you know, seasons changed. You know what I'm saying? You weren't playing wide open in good weather where you had that opportunity. But I think a lot of people, and look, this is the way it's going to go with anything is, you know, if you do one thing well and you don't do the other thing as well, they're going to harp on the fact that you don't do the one thing as well. Where Coach Stefanski has continually tried for better balance, um, you know, Nick Chubb for, you know, the amount of time he's, he's never going to get a carries number similar to Derrick Henry. It's just not the way it's going to be. Um, and Derrick Henry's numbers aren't sustainable, even if he is a bigger guy. And as you see, last couple of years, Derrick Henry has missed time. Um, the Browns for, you know, everything they've done with Nick Chubb, to their credit, it was another 17-game season for Nick Chubb last year, obviously. So he was able to answer the bell the entire season for this franchise as still – they're probably their best offensive skill player. 
Um, so the understanding of wanting more certainly makes sense. But, you know, I think, gee, there's been a lot of moving parts here over three or three years, whether it was the quarterback room, whether it is the wide receiver room. Um, you know, you made a move for a guy like Austin Hooper that never really panned out. So I think, you know, the, the issues, you know, are that his play calling is inconsistent. His offenses have been inconsistent. But there's some proof there that kind of backs the reasoning for that. Gee, the only consistent thing that's really been here in the three years has been Nick Chubb. And that's the one part of the Browns offense and Coach Stefanski's play calling that everybody kind of believes is the positive and the bright spot of all this. <clears throat> yeah, that's, you know, one of the things – you, know, you look at it, Nick Chubb has really strived under this system. Um, he's really been, I, I guess, uh, you know, 1,500 yards this year, which is, you know, an awesome season. Um, I, I think, Jeff, one of the things that I think the disconnect comes from is, you know, sometimes offensive play calls are like penalties, right? As an offensive lineman, you could you could be graded out at a 90%. You could be doing everything that you want to do right. You could have been having a great net game. But if, if, if it's third and five and you pick up the first down and you get called for holding, in the back of your mind, you're thinking like, man, this offensive lineman just cost us the game. Even though he could have been playing great the whole game. It, you know, play calling is a little bit like that. If you have a, you've you been calling a great script, guys are getting open, you've, you've schemed the people, a few people open, and then you may have a questionable screen pass or a questionable, uh, you know, draw play or a questionable route combination. And people, and, it, and it's really in crunch time, people are going to look at you and say, oh, my goodness, I can't stand his play calling. It's not that over in general that he doesn't have, you know, play calls or he doesn't have um, games where he's really doing and calling up a really great game. I think what people have a problem with is in certain circumstances, they second guess him on some of the plays that he does call, um, you know, bringing Jacoby Brissett in to throw a corner out, uh, not giving the ball to Nick Chubb on certain places down the distance on the goal line. All those things contribute to the disconnect. But when you're a player, you're in the, in the trenches with a coach and you know him game in, game out, and you've been there when they're putting the game plan together. So for you, you look at it a lot differently because you're saying, well, listen, hey, I thought 90% of our play call was good. It just so happened that we had a bad call go our way or it was a, a questionable call here or there. But at the end of the day, I think, um, you know, you, you live with, you know, the 90 percent and you just try to minimize the other other, you know, five or six plays where you kind of have a question mark on what you call. Them. No, I, it's it's certainly the way it goes. And look, there's times now think about it. We're all sitting there watching, you know, every Sunday, Monday night, Sunday night, Thursday night, whenever these games are played. And you kind of you get one of these going, like as you if you're moving with it, and you know, good buddy of mine puts out a ton of great content. Matt Waldman always refers to it as making the music. Great offense when you see it, it's about making the music, and one thing sets up another thing. You get Nick going. Guess what starts coming off of that? You get the underneath play action with David Njoku. You get a player like David Deshaun Watson feeding a guy like David Njoku. It starts freeing up coverage on a guy like Amari Cooper. And, I mean, I know there's been countless games. Uh, his first Thursday night game, week two of 2020 against the Bengals. It just everything he called that night worked. Go ahead later to uh, the 20 season on the road. You lose Odell. And you're down a ton. And now you just got to throw the living daylights out of the football. And he and Baker were in lock step that day. It just, boom, Donovan Peoples-Jones, we saw the birth of him that day. Just bang, bang, bang. And then there's times where they start slow. And then now you're reaching. You're forcing, you know, and, oh, man, we're down 10. Well, you're not going to get 10 down on this drive. You're not going to get 10 on this drive. So don't push it. And, you know, you do push it. And worse, you, you end up with – a 48-yard field, field goal opportunity, but you don't get it. So basically now the whole thing was for not. Um, I think, and this is a key, and look, you know, they're in bed here together, you know, Deshaun Watson and Coach Stefanski. As much as Coach Stefanski needs Deshaun Watson to play better, Deshaun Watson needs the 110% best of Coach Stefanski. This has got to work for all parties involved. Uh, there's just no way around it. You can't sugarfoot it. I mean, you can't sugarcoat it. Uh, it it's got to get better, and it's got to get consistent because 
the Deshaun Watson we've seen in, in the day, yeah, he was a guy like Joe Burrow where, hey, it's all right, we went down 14 early. Give me 45 minutes. Give me 45 pass attempts. I'll get us where we need to be, and I'll close this gap. The Browns, the way it constructed, we haven't seen it yet. So it's kind of hard to say that, oh, we know it can happen because we just truly haven't seen it yet. Um, but, you know, for this to truly, you know, go the Browns way, you know, the marriage between Deshaun Watson, Coach Kevin Stefanski, it's got to get there. Uh, another big name has hit the free agent market here. And as they start doing this, you know, G and I will you know, give you guys, you know, our thoughts. Uh, is there interest? Should there be, is there interest from us? Should there be interest from the Browns themselves? Uh, so we'll continue to do that here. Uh, as always, we appreciate you all for making Lockdown Browns your first listen every single day, whether it is for free on your favorite podcast app, or of course, here on YouTube. Make sure you're subscribed and you get notifications on. We back again. And, and you know, this is uh, the great time of the year, Jeff, when we talk about big names, big people, <clears throat> and individuals that the Browns could target to help them win some football games. And we go to no no one other than a position of need linebacker uh, for your Cleveland Browns. Um, and, and let's get to uh, a guy, big name, a guy who played in Seattle a lot of years, a guy who, who just recently played for the Rams, linebacker Bobby Wagner. Um, he uh, is basically um, going to be a free agent coming up. Uh, he, uh, Walker, walked away from the uh, last four years of the contract and would have to, um, would have paid him a base salary of seven and a half million dollars and a roster opponent of 3.5 million in 2023. His departure from the Rams saved them more than 12 million, according to reports. The Browns are 15 million over the cap right now, with 22 unrestricted free agents uh, of their own with whom to contend with and haven't made any moves as of yet. Now, we talk about this linebacker Anthony Walker Jr. went down with a quad tendon in September. Uh, you also have Jacob Phillips, Sione Taki Taki, and uh, JOK all went down as well. Linebacker will likely be in need of position. When you look at this move, Jeff, and I, I'm looking at Bobby Wagner, he's a name and he has the athleticism that I like. He's a little older, but um, this is a guy for me. If you can put him in the middle of Jim Schwartz's defense at the right place and the right cost, I wouldn't be opposed to it. I would have to look and see and, and, and figure out what's going on with the quad with um, with Anthony Walker. How close is he going to be able to play? Is he going to be a guy that's going to participate in the offseason program? He's a free agent as well. My thing is this. They need a linebacker. I'm not sure um, you know, how much Bobby Wagner has left in the tank. However, he's a guy who was a captain last year for the Rams. He was a multiple-time captain for the Seattle Seahawks. He's a name. Um, I just don't know if they got enough to pay him. If they can get him in here, I'd love to have a name like uh, like his, uh, Bobby Wagner, in the middle of the defense. Your thoughts on, on what it is uh, that you are you are looking for in the linebacker? Would you take Bobby Wagner over a Anthony Walker that's coming off injury? Well, first things first, imagine the journey for Bobby Wagner last year. You leave Seattle to sign with the reigning Super Bowl champion, Los Angeles Rams. It all falls apart for the Los Angeles Rams. And there you are, first weekend of the playoffs, watching the Seattle Seahawks in the playoffs. Just absolutely. Crazy. It's crazy the way things can work out in this league. Um, go from this standpoint. Take the money and throw it out the window. Is Bobby Wagner the best linebacker? Would you? I would. You would take Bobby Wagner over the field. Every linebacker that played for the Cleveland Browns last year, yes, or Bobby Wagner. You would take Bobby Wagner. There's just no way around it. I mean, you know, this guy, you know, most likely is on a Hall of Fame arc of his career. Uh, I think it's like nine times either first team or second team all probably just an absolute. PFF's highest rated linebacker this past season, which was obviously a terrible, terrible year for the Los Angeles Rams overall. Um, and there's a couple of ways to look at it this from the perspective of Bobby Wagner. Did you walk away from the Rams because you felt there isn't the opportunity for the team to succeed um, financially? Is that the issue? You know what I'm saying? Because there's a lot of money tied up in the Rams. So if I go out, there's some flexibility for you. It's not like Bobby Wagner was a longtime Ram and, you know, is entrenched in the area. Um, but is Bobby Wagner ring chasing? Uh, is Bobby Wagner still, you know, looking for coin, which certainly could be the case? 
Um, but as far as the financials, this is something the Browns have shown over the last three years is it's just a position they're not writing checks to. They're just not writing big checks to linebackers. Does that maybe change a little bit now with first-year defense coordinator Jim Schwartz in tow? It certainly could, but I don't think the right approach when you have, obviously, glaring holes at much more important positions, free safety, uh, all the defensive line position uh, needs that they have, that you know, writing a $7 million check to Bobby Wagner is going to satisfy those things. Um, then the other thing is there's not much of a connection here between Jim Schwartz and Bobby Wagner. If there was, then you certainly would believe, uh-oh, you know what I'm saying? These guys, they got they got a history. You know, They've made it work before. Um, Bobby Wagner's a hell of a player. He is a hell of a linebacker. Um, and this guy who's played his entire career on the West Coast, does that change? That That's, for me, is a big question there in regards to Bobby Wagner. Um, I would love the player. I, I just don't see a, uh, a way, you know, financially that uh, Bobby Wagner and the Browns would both be satisfied with each other. All depends. It all depends on the price tag. Um, this is actually the first player that I've seen that the Browns have would have a, a realistic opportunity to talk to. Some of them, you know, we 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 got to Jerry Judy's of the world, and we talked about that. And I'm like, uh, I don't know how. To, why would they give him up? He's a free agent. He's he's leaving the Rams. He said it, he's the best player they have. The Browns had a, a gaping hole in the middle of their defense last year. Could not stop the run. Maybe this is an opportunity for them to say, listen, let's solidify up the middle. This is a which is a position that we do. Maybe if you walk away from John Johnson's contract, you try to fill that hole with somebody that may be on the roster, somebody that's a little cheaper, and then you have a little bit of money left over. But they do have 22 unrestricted free agents, as, as they said. They haven't made a signing yet. It would be really interested to see um, what they do because if they sign – if they sign him in, in, in the offseason or they make a really major move to try to go get Bobby Wagner, it tells me that the Browns may be revamping a lot of things in their philosophy defensively, which would mean that they may put more money in, into linebacker. They may be putting more money into the defensive tackles. They may they may be looking to put spend more money in that area than I would once thought because you are correct. They haven't given any linebackers any major deals. They haven't really – gone out and drafted a linebacker really, really high. However, um, you know, if they can find a guy of this ilk, I think he makes your defense tremendously better right now. Just just putting him there, if you get him, you're a better defense all, automatically. It's just, I don't know if it, if it fits financially between him and, and what the Browns want to do. Yeah, this would be something, you know, if Bobby Wagner was in a bad situation with the team come the trade deadline. And, you know, the Browns said, you want to know what? We really, really could use that veteran presence. We could really, really use that ex that leadership that a guy like Bobby Wagner brings. Um, you know, look, Bobby Wagner deserves a solid amount of money. Um, and I just think it's a number that the Cleveland Browns probably will not be comfortable paying. Um, and, I mean, just look at the track record of the way this has gone on the last few years. Uh, it's been rookies and it's been dirt cheap veterans uh you know last year you know it was anthony walker on a cheap deal then it was obviously you know the move to get uh deon jones reggie Ragland, who was you know on the vegas practice squad for three quarters of the season and probably had no intentions of taking snaps in the nfl in 2022 um great player hall of fame probably player one day i just don't see a way it works out for the cleveland browns and as much as i would like it to i would i absolutely would um, I just don't sink, uh, see it sinking up, and the Browns certainly have a lot more bigger needs. Uh, so got to a bunch here today. You know, obviously now the defensive line coach, the of the assistant coaches, that was going to be the most important hire uh, this cycle. Ben Bloom promoted, going to get the opportunity to work with an absolute master of his craft in Jim Schwartz. Um, big opportunity for a guy like Ben Bloom to maybe you know cement his name. Uh, further up in the coaching hierarchy in the NFL, Deshaun Watson, you know, good words for Kevin Stefanski as, you know, year two, all eyes will obviously be on number four and coach Stefanski um, and another veteran hitting the market. And, you know, we'll see the way it all starts to trickle down here in a couple of weeks. Uh, he is Garrett Bush, ultimate Cleveland sports show, Monday through Friday, 11 to 1. 
Garrett, Adam, the bull, Jay Crawford, Mikey, Ben nuggets, making it all happen behind the scenes. Uh, if you're not a, you're not a watcher, make sure you are again, Monday through Friday, 11 to one on YouTube, Saturday mornings, barbershop, 92, three, the fan on air personality, Garrett Bush. You can catch him there. Many other opportunities more than just Saturday, uh, to keep up with those. Make sure you're following at G Bush 91, myself, Jeff Lloyd at Jeff underscore LJ underscore Lloyd show itself locked on Browns follow back account DMS are always open. Uh, as always, we appreciate everybody who makes Locked On Browns their first listen every single day, whether it's for free on your favorite podcast app here on YouTube. Make sure you're subscribed, notifications on, content drops, you're ready to consume it. And if you got Roku, go ahead, search Locked On Cleveland Sports. You will find us, the Locked On Browns podcast, the ultimate Cleveland sports show, Locked On Guards, Locked On Cavs, Cleveland. We got you covered in that respect. All that being said, this has been your daily delivery of all things Dog Pound, LGB. On the LOB. Let's go, Browns.